Hi, everyone. We're still waiting for just a few more people, and we'll get started at two minutes past the hour. Thanks. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. Today's presentation is Celebrating School Health with Every Kid Healthy Week, and it's brought to you by Action for Healthy Kids. My name is Sean Wade, and I will be your presenter today. Before we get started, I want to review just a few logistics. You can see a control panel. It's usually on the right-hand side of your screen. You can use your telephone or speakers to listen to the presentation, but everyone will be muted to avoid any static and background interference. There is a dialog box at the bottom of that control panel, and you can type some questions into there as you have them throughout uh, the webinar today. We'll have hopefully some time at the end to get to those questions and get those answered for you. Um, and if, uh, if we don't get to yours or if we run out of time at the end, uh, we will get back to you later uh, after the webinar is over. This webinar is being recorded. Uh, links to the recording and resources will be sent to you two to three business days after the webinar. So I'd like to introduce myself. As I said, my name is Sean Wade, and I am the manager of volunteer initiatives here at Action for Healthy Kids. I work with our national organization, our network of schools, and our partner organizations to develop strategies for engaging parents and uh, family members into school health and wellness efforts. Um, that includes uh, family members, youth, and other community members, as well as nonprofits, businesses, and other community partners. I'm also very excited today to have two guest speakers with us uh, who will be sharing their own tips and some strategies around celebrating school health with every Get Healthy Week. Uh, Laura Desjant is a parent, school, and district volunteer for school health initiatives and Action for Healthy Kids Healthy School Hero in 2017 for her work at Celebration School and in Osceola County in Florida. And Bridget Lane is a registered dietitian and nutrition services coordinator on the district level in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, just outside the Twin Cities. She will discuss what they did there to engage schools throughout the district in school health and in every good healthy week. We'll tell you more about our guests as we introduce them, but now I'd like to take uh, just a couple minutes to talk about what we'll cover in today's presentation. So I'll start off today with uh, an overview of Action for Healthy Kids, who we are and what we do, um, and then uh, 
get into a, a brief overview of Every Kid Healthy Week with some results from the past year. Uh, we'll then hear from Laura about her work in Florida, and I'll go over some resources that are designed specifically for Every Kid Healthy Week to make uh, your participation simple and easy, uh, including how to register your event and join the national movement. Bridget will then tell us about her successful events in Minnesota, and I'll highlight some final keys to success and additional opportunities for you to take advantage of to enhance your events. Finally, we'll have some time for some questions, as I mentioned at the end, so please do use that question box to submit anything you may have as we go along. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, start with action for healthy kids. First, um, a little bit of background. Uh, our vision is a world in which every kid is healthy, active, and ready to learn. Uh, action for Healthy Kids fights childhood obesity, undernourishment, and physical inactivity by helping schools become healthier places. We are moms, dads, teachers, students, school and community leaders, and school wellness experts who have banded together to create healthier learning environments for our children. We believe that everyone has a part to play in ending the nation's childhood obesity epidemic. Our programs, tools, and resources make that possible. Uh, our goal is to create school communities where uh, children learn how to make healthy choices from the minute they walk in the front door to the minute they leave at the end of the school day. We were founded in 2002 by former Surgeon General David Satcher, and today we have more than 120,000 members and constituents in our network. We also partner with dozens of professional associations, government agencies, and corporations at the national and local levels. As you just heard, uh, we are focused in schools. So why the focus in schools? Uh, well, schools reach most children and adolescents in, in the community, and they provide kids with opportunities to practice healthy behaviors. Kids spend around 1,200 hours per year in school. Teachers, administrators, and school staff are key role models, and so are parent volunteers in the school. Curriculum standards for health uh, typically include nutrition and physical education. So shouldn't our policies, practices, and climate reflect, reflect those standards rather than conflict with them? Uh, we try to give schools the resources and tools that they need in order to make those standards uh, a reality every day in the school. And schools show what we value and what is important in our community. So those are just uh, a few good talking points for you if you encounter skeptical members of the school community uh, or are struggling to gain administrative support, whether it's for uh, school initiatives throughout, school health initiatives throughout the year or ever get Healthy Week events specifically. Uh, another way to garner support is by connecting your health and wellness work to the learning connection. That is that kids who are healthy and have access to regular physical activity learn better. I mention this because our school grants are not just about making kids healthier. They are also about helping kids be better equipped to learn. We know that kids who eat better achieve academically. Studies have shown that undernourished children tend to have low energy, are often irritable, and have difficulty concentrating. They also score lower on vocabulary, reading comprehension, and math tests. All right, so uh, as we get started here, uh, I do want to know a little bit about who's on the call today. Um, so if you could just take a few uh, moments, I'll leave a poll up to, to find out if your school uh, or, or you yourself have ever hosted an Every Kid Healthy Week event. So you can go ahead and answer there. And I'll give you about 30 seconds uh, to, to fill that out. J'ai dit que tu me déranges pas, ok All right, it looks like uh, everybody's had a, a chance, just about everybody's had a chance to fill that out. And uh, most of you, it looks like, are new to Every Kid Healthy Week. About half of you have never hosted an Every Kid Healthy Week event before. Uh, so that's great. Hopefully we'll be able to answer some questions uh, that you might have today and, and uh, talk through uh, some ideas and, and planning resources to help you out.
All right. So uh, I want to start by giving a, uh, a little bit of background about Every Kid Healthy Week. So Every Kid Healthy Week this year uh, is April 23rd through the 27th. The official week every year is the fourth week of April. Um, and it, uh, it has been approved by Congress and recognized uh, as an official national health observance during the fourth week of April every year. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the, the dates there uh, 23rd through the 27th of April, but we do have some flexibility, uh, as we always do. Um, if uh, if your school is not able to host something during that specific week, uh, most events that happen in the spring, uh, April and May, uh, will qualify as Every Kid Healthy Week events as long as they are uh, a family-friendly, health-promoting event. So Action for Healthy Kids started Every Kid Healthy Week in 2013 to really bring focus to the nation's obesity epidemic and its solutions. Sound nutrition, regular physical activity, and health-promoting school programs that help students be better prepared to learn and succeed academically. It's held annually during the fourth week of April and is also designed to provide opportunities for parents, families, and community members to get engaged in its solutions. From hosting family health fair nights to renovating school playgrounds, from working in the school school garden to conducting healthy food taste tests, more than 5,000 schools around the country have hosted Every Kid Healthy Week events to celebrate their school's work and bring together over 2.5 million teachers, administrators, food service staff, parents, school nurses, families, and community members to roll up their sleeves and get involved in school wellness programs. So you can uh, you can see there over the, the last five years, we've had uh, just a, a ton of uh, participation from uh, throughout the school communities throughout the country. Uh, as I mentioned, it is officially recognized by Congress as a national uh, health observance. Um, and just to give you a little bit more historical context, during the first year of Every Kid Healthy Week in 2013, 83 schools in 22 states hosted events. So it started really pretty small, uh, engaging about 26,000 participants. Uh, it has since grown each year. And in 2017, we hosted uh, more than 1,400 schools, uh, hosted events in 42 different states, engaging over 500,000 and participants. Those, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, included the students, school staff, parents, family members, community members, uh, elected officials locally, uh, just a, a lot of people that were getting involved to be a part of school health and celebrate everything that was happening. We also worked with schools to promote their events and the great work they do year-round, and about 95% of schools did some sort of promotion for their event. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more later about what that looks like, but uh, it could be anything from flyers to newsletters, social media posts, uh, or full-on press releases to get some media out um, in your uh, to your school and to your event. Some other uh, statistics from Every Kid Healthy Week 2017 last year. Um, we uh, you can see there that the top different types of uh, Every Kid Healthy Week events that uh, were hosted by schools. Uh, taste tests by far uh, the, uh, the the largest. With almost 300, um, uh, and then family fitness days with about 125 or more field days right behind that. Uh, so, so those are kind of the the most popular types of events to host. Uh, but schools really were getting uh, very creative and, and had quite a few different uh, types of events. So uh, you'll hear from a couple of our panelists later about the types of events that they've hosted, uh, and. Uh, uh, you'll get to see uh, some other uh, some photos and, and, and other uh, from other types of events as well. You can see there that also about 400 of the events had a volunteer component along with them. So that's uh, engaging parents and families, not just in attending the events, but also uh, act actively getting involved uh, by helping to, to run them. Uh, and, and so we had about a little over 4,000 volunteers, fa parents, family, community members that helped out with the events. We also had five states that officially recognized is Every Kid Healthy Week um, in their uh, state um, legislature. Um, I'll also uh, talk a little bit more shortly about how you can join the national movement and get your events registered, but I want to first introduce our first panelist today. Uh, Laura Dejant uh, is a parent in uh, Florida at Celebration K-8 School, uh, and uh, she's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how she has worked with her kids' school to plan a 2017 Every Kid Healthy Week event. Good afternoon, Sean. Thank you so much for having me on this webinar. Can you hear me? I can. Go ahead, Laura. Oh, wonderful. Well, um, I wanted to share a little bit about what we've done in our school, the Celebration K-8 school. 
uh, a few ideas of uh, events that could be implemented for the Every Kid Healthy Week. Um, one of the events that could be implemented, as you see in the picture, is a walk to school or a bike to school event um, to invite all of the community members to come to school without their car. And this helps to promote uh, physical activity as well as uh, binding between children and parents. So it's a great way to um, organize a, a family event and uh, get the kids to be more um, active during the day. Um, another um, idea that could be implemented is um, to organize a taste test, for instance, um, of infused uh, waters. Uh, what we've done in the past is we used um, water containers and we added citrus or berries or herbs, and um, the students and parents love that. And it's a great way to show that um, it's possible to drink a very uh, delicious and a healthy um, drink. Um, other taste tests that we've implemented is um, unusual fruits and veggies that they, the children don't usually get during the school meals. Uh, that's something else that uh, gets to open up their palate. Um, another uh, initiative we've done in the past is an art contest uh, that students get to participate in on the theme of healthy nutrition. And we did the art contest and uh, we displayed the best um, artworks in the lunchroom so that all of the students and parents and staff could um, admire. So that was a great um, event that was done in the past. Uh, I've already covered the walk and back to school events, but um, another thing that could be implemented and is low cost and easy to do is um, to paint floor activities in the recess area. Uh, what we've done is we've painted um, four squares and a hopscotch and um, agility ladders on the floor, and that only requires a few buckets of paint and paint brushes and painter's tape, and it's something that uh, the students and the parents can do together. So it's a good um, initiative. Another thing is uh, paint a garden that can start very small. It could be just purchasing a few bags of compost and uh, and soil and planting seeds and watering. And um, it's a great way to start a school garden, I think, with the low budget. Uh, another idea to do uh, for that week is to invite community volunteers to host um, yoga or Pilates or step classes in the school for students and maybe parents if they're invited to uh, be active together. Uh, it's also possible to invite, for instance, a local far farmer to display their, um, their produce, or sometimes um, schools can also invite a dairy farmer using the dairy council. Uh, that is something that we are going to do at our school uh, this, this school year. Uh, so that's another fun initiative. And of course, uh, all of these previous um, events could be organized during the school day or uh, as a family night, which is a great way to involve uh, the parents and the, the entire family. Um, I wanted to share a few uh, in event planning tips that um, has, has helped um, us in the past when organizing events. Um, the first thing that I would do personally as an um, event organizer is to gain approval from administration of the school as well as all of the involved uh, parties. For instance, if a taste test is organized, I would, get, I would gain approval from the um, cafeteria manager. Um, another important thing is to communicate the event in advance to all the parties so that everybody knows it's coming and everybody has it on their calendar. Um, communicating to the school staff, for instance, through a morning announcement or an email to the, the teachers. Um, communicating to the parents through a handout in the backpacks or um, communicating to the students uh, as well as um, social media uh, also works pretty well to reach out to the community and the business partners. Um, it's also important to secure volunteers ahead of time and make sure that you have 
enough volunteers on D-Day. Uh, more volunteers is always better than less because uh, it makes up for easier work and faster work. Um, so a good way to secure volunteers um, that I found is just to um, go through the approved volunteer list of the school or uh, seek on social media on parent pages or just ask parents. Um, also, it's important to make a list of all the materials that will be needed on D-Day and establish a budget and see if the, the entire material list fits within the budget and order the materials well ahead of time so they're all um, uh, delivered on D-Day. Um, another um, idea that I had as a little tip is really to invite the volunteers to join well before the event starts on D-Day because, for instance, um, I've organized taste tests in the past that I invited my volunteers just to, to start serving the taste test and I actually did all the cutting and the prepping before and it took me a lot longer than if I had invited my volunteers to help me with the prepping. So I feel that uh, when we have the volunteers well in advance, it, it makes up for an easier and smoother way, uh, smoother work. Um, and finally, I think it's important to communicate the success of the events by um, uh, sharing pictures and success stories and quotes uh, of what happened during the event. And that can go through, for instance, an article in the community newspaper or, um, or Facebook or other social media, maybe a, a little article in the new school newsletter on the school uh, webpage. Uh, whatever communication media is available, uh, we also communicate um, to the school district uh, communication team and they share it with the entire school district. So that's a great way to inspire other schools in the future. Um, and so those were my um, ideas for having a successful event. Um, and I, I'm happy to share uh, more if you have any questions. Great, thank you so much, Laura. I uh, also uh, added the, a few of the pictures that you sent over here. So uh, if you want to explain uh, what's happening in, in each of these uh, from yes. events that you've hosted in the past. Absolutely. So um, the picture on the left with the little girl holding an evaluation form was during a, a taste test. And she uh, tried one of the um, lettuce and leafy greens we grew uh, in the school garden. And she had a chance to rate her taste test experience. And usually you find out that most kids like or love healthy foods. So that's a great way to communicate after that with the entire community that, hey, your child loves healthy food. So if you serve it to them, they will eat it. And on that uh, form, you may see also um, the recipes that were served that day to inspire the parents. So that's something that... Um, the students can bring home in their backpack. Um, to the right is a, a small garden that the first graders uh, started this year. Uh, we purchased uh, the boxes and the soil and the pants through um, grant funding. And uh, the students are growing all sorts of uh, vegetables and aromatic herbs um, uh, in a little area. It's a very small area that was uh, deserted and kind of abandoned in the past and now it's uh, very much beautified. So that's a great project. Uh, to the left is uh, one of our previous taste tests of infused waters. So you may see the containers. Uh, what we did is we um, added citrus, berries, and herbs, uh, various kinds in each uh, of the containers. And we had volunteers serve the waters. And we explained to the students that this is a, a type of uh, drink that is healthy and nutritious for them and also tastes delicious. And they got to actually pick a price for tasting the delicious uh, waters. So we uh, got those prizes through the um, Action for Healthy Kids Game on Grants. So that was wonderful and a great way to keep them healthy and active as well. And to the right is a picture of when we um, painted all the floor activities in the recess area. We um, were painting here the, the uh, four square. It's not that hard. I mean, we just um, placed some um, 
painter's tape on the floor and just um, went ahead and painted. So everybody can do it. And uh, we did that actually a couple of years ago. And still today, the, the students are playing every single day at recess with that four square. So a big success. Great, thank you so much, Laura. And uh, I know you uh, you mentioned some of the Every Healthy Week uh, event ideas that you uh, have used in the past and are using this year. Where are you in uh, your planning for your Every Healthy Week event this year? Sure. So this week we are going to have our um, event during the bike to school day, which is uh, actually on May 9th. And what we will do is we will um, serve, again, the infused uh, waters uh, to the students. It's usually very hot in Florida uh, in May, and the students will be working out really hard to come to school in the morning. So we want to reward them with a very healthy and uh, delicious treat. So that's the, the plan is to um, offer this uh, fresh taste test during that event. Oh, excellent. Uh, that sounds great. Um, and if anyone else has any questions for Laura, uh, please do go ahead and enter those into the chat box, uh, and we'll try to get to those um, as we go along. But it doesn't look like, as of now, uh, there are any other questions. So uh, thank you again. I really appreciate you sharing your story with us. And um, I, I hope that hearing about some of these event ideas and, and planning tips uh, have inspired and, and are starting to get everyone else excited about planning your own their own activities this year. So thank you, Laura. My pleasure, anytime. Okay, so uh, as you're starting to think through and get excited and, and work on planning your own activities for Every, Every Kid Healthy Week 2018, uh, maybe you are a, a, a school that has grant funding from Action for Healthy Kids uh, this, this year and it's a, a requirement, a deliverable as part of your grant to host an Every Kid Healthy Week. Uh, maybe you're a school that, that doesn't have funding this year or is hoping to get funding in the future. Uh, and you're just excited about hosting a, a, an event with us this year. Um, but wherever you're coming from, whether you're a, a, a school, a parent, a community member, a, a, a concerned family member, uh, we have tons of resources to, to help you as you're as you're starting to plan your events and starting to, like uh, Laura said, uh, get other parents and, and family members and community members involved as volunteers. So first step in planning those activities, uh, I encourage you to visit everykidhealthyweek.org. You can see the homepage right there. Um, we, we are uh, constantly updating and, and adding more uh, resources and, and ideas uh, to, to help out there. Um, you can also find a lot of uh, event ideas at Game On. Uh, our Game On activity pages uh, are uh, really well laid out and designed so that you can see uh, activity ideas in, in each uh, different area of the school. So uh, I encourage you to, to play around there and, and check out some ideas if you're still kind of thinking about uh, or needing some, uh, some help brainstorming what type of event to host. These are some of the resources that we have available on the EveryKidHealthyWeek.org website. Uh, you can see there we have uh, toolkits and uh, uh, event flyers that you can edit, um, planning timelines, uh, uh, an info sheet on how to register your event, uh, but there's uh, lots of different ideas and, and, and uh, resources there that you can use uh, as you navigate to that page. I want to highlight just a couple of those resources here. Uh, the first that you can see there on the left-hand side of your screen uh, is an Every Good Healthy Week toolkit. Uh, that toolkit uh, is it's a really uh, in-depth kind of comprehensive document that contains tons of ideas and, and some additional guidance on how to plan your activity, kind of beginning to end starting with uh, some ideas of, of different activities and events that you could host, uh, and going all the way through uh, the, the planning each step of, uh, of the event as you get closer to April. You'll see in the toolkit, uh, there's even more resources and links within each activity idea to assist you in planning those um, and really kind of walk you through each step of that process. Another, res another resource that you can see in the screenshot on the right is a uh, one-page info sheet that gives a brief and general overview of Every Kid Healthy Week. Um, that's a great first step when you're trying to uh, work with the administration to kind of get uh, buy-in for your events uh, as you're uh, building support throughout the school community. Uh, it's just a, it's a nice uh, kind of brief snapshot of what Every Kid Healthy Week is. Next couple of resources that I want to show you. Uh, the one on the left there is a, a an editable uh, Every Good Healthy Week event flyer. 
uh, that you can download there, and it's a, an editable, editable PDF form. Um, so you can add in your school name, the name of the event, where it is, when it is, and then any uh, additional notes, uh, description of activities. There's a section there for um, a contact information, uh, and, uh, and it's a nice kind of flashy, catchy flyer uh, to grab the attention of folks at school. So that's something that you could uh, print out and put in backpacks uh, to home with kids. It's something that you can post in the main office uh, or around the school uh, to let people know what's going on. Uh, the uh, other resource there that's on the right is um, uh, it's a great um, resource there. It's a, it's a, it's a full step-by-step -step kind of planning timeline and checklist. So uh, if you're anything like me, I love checklists. I love being able to kind of go through and knowing uh, every step of the way what I need to do uh, being able to check that box off to know that I'm done. So uh, that's something that we created to help you guys out uh, if you need that. And it's broken down by about how far it advanced uh, from the event that, uh, that we recommend uh, you taking care of each, uh, each step there. Uh, and then within that timeline, um, there's some sections there on, uh, you know, whether it's promotion, uh, gathering resources, uh, planning for the unexpected. Uh, you can uh, check that, uh, that full resource out. It's a, it's a three-page document there with a full timeline and a, and a checklist of, of everything that you need to get done. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'd also encourage you to check out the Game On program. That's another hugely valuable resource on the Action for Healthy Kids org website if you are looking for additional activity ideas there's an outline for almost every activity that i've uh, mentioned here so far uh, that laura talked about uh, and you can search game on to find cafeteria activities garden ideas physical activity ideas from the, from the gym or before and after school many others uh, so with, within each of those activity ideas there are tips and resources specific to that type of activity um, so again uh, take care of uh, most of that that, that kind of initial planning uh, up front so that you can focus on uh, working with everybody else, getting every, um, getting folks to the event and getting kids excited about it. Next, I want to take a few minutes to talk through how you can plug into the national movement of Every Kid Healthy Week and register your event to put your school on the map. Um, so this is a great way to, to kind of show uh, everybody, how many schools across the country are celebrating school health or school health accomplishments throughout the year? Um, you can see there the map from 2017. Uh, the one thing that uh, got cut off there, we also had uh, an event or two in Hawaii last year, which is, I think, the first time that we've had Hawaiian events as part of Every Kid Healthy Week. Um, so that was really exciting. Uh, but uh, it does uh, decenter the map a little bit when you have to include Hawaii. So we, we focus on the, the contiguous 48 there. Um, but uh, on everykidhealthyweek.org, there's a link and instructions on how to register your event um, to put your school on that map for 2018. We invite um, all schools who are hosting Every Kid Healthy Week events uh, to register their event uh, through that tool on the website. It's in our school portal, so if you have a grant with us, if you've completed the SHE, uh, a school health index assessment of where you are uh, uh, as a school uh, for school health, um, you have a, uh, a login to that school portal. So it's all, and I'll, I'll walk you through in a few minutes, step by step, what that looks like. Um, but that's where all of the event registration is housed. Um, if you don't have an, a, a login, uh, an account through our school portal yet, uh, it's super easy to create, and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes as well. So as I mentioned right here, this is the entrance page to the school portal. Um, this is where you can manage your events uh, and, and start to kind of recruit and manage uh, the volunteers, any volunteers, any parents, uh, family members, community members um, that you might be recruiting as well. So as I mentioned, all uh, funded school contacts should already have an account in the portal, but if you don't, it's really easy to create one. It just takes a couple minutes. Um, all you have to do is enter in uh, an email um, and a password, choose a username and a password, um, and then we'll uh, send you an email to confirm that and you'll be able to log in on the site. Once you're in the portal, you'll just need to click on the events link on the toolbar on the left. Uh, you can see there, that's where uh, all of our event management tools are, are housed. Clicking on that will uh, take you to this screen where you can see any events that you've already registered. Uh, so if you've done an Every Kid Healthy Week event in the past, that will show up here. Uh, if you have not, you can request, uh, if, if, if you have or have not, if you haven't done an event before this, uh, screen as it is here will show up blank and you can request a new event there. 
once you check, uh, click on that button, this, uh, it will take you to the registration form. Um, you'll have to fill out that form with your school and event name. Uh, I do want to point out uh, event type. There are a few event type options there. If you're registering an every Healthy Week event, make sure that uh, you note it, uh, classify it as an EKH Week event in the event type box. Um, that just helps us um, kind of keep everything straight. Everything that's supposed to be an every Healthy Week event is there. If it's an event that's happening in April uh, or May and you uh, classify it as a school health team event because it's the school health team planning it, um, I understand that, but I will also, I'll probably follow up with you an email, with an email and say, hey, um, do you want to make this an Everkid Healthy Week event? It's, uh, there's some flexibility around the dates and you can uh, join the movement there. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to decide whether you would like to use the system to help you recruit volunteers. Um, I'll talk about that in just a minute, but uh, there is a spot there uh, that you can um, make it available to any volunteers in your community to, to get involved. Um, if you do select that option, uh, you will also have the option to, uh, if anyone expresses interest uh, as a volunteer from the community, you'll have the option to uh, reach out to them directly and, and make sure that it's a good fit. When you choose uh, the EKH week event option as, a, as an event type, you'll be prompted to complete this form uh, that gives a, a few additional details about the event. So please do fill that out as best as you can and pay particular attention um, to the question about serving a healthy snack at your event. Uh, one of our sponsors for Every Kid Healthy Week is Go Go Squeeze and uh, they have again this year um, been generous and, and are awarding a $100 mini grant to the first 250 schools who register an event and commit to serving a healthy snack. So if you are one of those first 250 schools, uh, that's great. Congratulations, and, and uh, we'll be following up with you shortly to let you know um, that you have qualified for that $100 mini grant to help uh, support your event. Once you complete that registration survey, uh, just hit submit at the bottom, uh, and you'll receive a confirmation email and be all set to go to promote your event. There are also, as I mentioned, detailed step-by-step -step guides on how to register your event on everykidshealthyweek.org, uh, or if you do have additional questions, you can enter them in the chat box or connect with me after the webinar. Uh, I want to talk through just a, a few top reasons. I've mentioned a few times uh, engaging parents and families in your Every Kid Healthy Week event, um, and, and uh, want to talk through about why that is uh, a really a valuable way to get folks involved from your school community and let them know what you're doing uh, to support school health. Um, so here's, here's just a, a couple top reasons, and there are many, many more that, that I could go into, but, but just to highlight a few here, uh, some of the benefits of, of bringing in uh, parents and family members as, as volunteers, uh, as Laura described earlier, getting them on board early so that they can kind of help you out uh, and take some of the burden of hosting the event off of your shoulders. Uh, you can do more with limited resources. Volunteers um, are often able to help schools accomplish more um, with, uh, without costing more resources when done well. You can also work to build new connections, uh, letting parents and family members know what's happening in the school. Uh, you can um, build real relationships with volunteers to help uh, your school in the future as new needs might arise and, and help other parents and the community feel more connected to the school. Um, it also just lets everybody know what's happening, all the great things that are happening at your school, get them involved. It should be uh, a really fun event. Maybe one of, uh, it, maybe you're planning a, you know, something like an end of the year field day uh, or some other sort of big celebration to celebrate the end of the year and you're bringing in um, a, a health promoting component to the, the event. Uh, and you want, family members to be involved, parents to be involved, everybody to come out to the event. Um, but the more that they get involved in, in uh, helping to host that event, the more engaged and, and, and um, connected they'll feel to, to what you're doing. So uh, as you're thinking about maybe who would be the right people to ask, think about who in your school community has the, the right skills or interests that complement your needs um, and, and can address the things that you need to get done. Then you can brainstorm ways to engage those, uh, those folks um, as volunteers to help meet those needs. And again, as I mentioned in the, um, in the toolkit earlier when I was discussing that, there are uh, a ton of different volunteer engagement, parent and family engagement tips in that toolkit as well. Um, you can also check out parentsforhealthykids.org. Uh, that's the new website that we've launched just within the last year uh, that you can use uh, to, to get parents involved uh, and, and really get them committed to school health. 
So I would now like to turn it over to our second panelist of the day, uh, Bridget Lane. Uh, she is the Nutrition Services Coordinator for White Bear Lake Area Schools in the, in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Uh, last year, the district worked with each school to host Every Good Healthy Week events and prioritize school health with a coordinated partnership. The White Bear Lake District has been a, an awesome partner for Action for Healthy Kids over the past several years with many schools in the district receiving grants um, and integrating school health throughout the school day. So I'll turn it over to Bridget now uh, to take it away and, and talk about her partners partnership with Bear Power. All right. Thanks, John. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep. You're good. All right. Great. So yes, I'm Bridget. I'm the Nutrition Services Coordinator here with White Bear Lake Area Schools. Uh, we work in partnership with uh, Bear Power and we have a community health program coordinator with Bear Power. Uh, we work very closely in our district. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you'll see uh, kind of our partnership. Um, Bear Power is a community-wide initiative. Uh, it helps to make it easier for families and kids to eat well uh, and move more in the White Bear Lake area. Uh, this is done through partnerships with uh, the school district, the local businesses, and community members. Uh, so you'll see that White Bear Lake schools have been working to change the school environment uh, in five key areas. They are physical activity, food and beverages, rewards and celebration, screen time, and staff engagement. Uh, you'll see we have a graph. This is one particular school. We have uh, nine elementary schools that we're doing this work in. Uh, this one's at Matasca, and you'll see in 2014 uh, there was a survey that went out on how the students averaged in these areas, and you'll see great improvements uh, into 2017 on where we've been able to decrease or make changes in each one of those areas. Uh, and in the next slide, you'll we'll kind of go into the Action for Healthy Kids grant. And this is why we wanted to let you know about our partnership with Bear Power. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a group that comes into our classrooms at the elementary schools at least once a year. They do a three week challenge. And so the students are used to seeing something about nutrition education, physical activity. Uh, and it really helped us lay the groundwork for how we could get some of the Action for Healthy Kids uh, grant work and Every Kid Healthy Week into the classrooms and get the whole school involved. And so, so we already had Bear Power liaisons in each school. Uh, and one of the things that happened in previous years is uh, they do a try for five. And so in the classrooms, the kids are encouraged to try these five vegetables. Well, the kids took that very seriously and they decided they would try for their five veggies a day all at lunchtime. Uh, and I work the nutrition services department. So what we were seeing is these kids taking five huge servings of vegetables and then not being able to eat them in their lunchtime and throwing them all away. That is when uh, myself and Bear Power realized we need to partner more to make it a well-rounded wellness experience, not in just educating in the classroom, but into physical education and into uh, the lunchroom as well. So uh, at the time it was Julia Johnson with Bear Power and I, met with Action for Healthy Kids, the state liaison, and we uh, applied for the $1,000 grant for nutrition and physical activity. So you'll kind of see what, on the slide there, what we did for physical activity. We had active recess kits, Garmin watches and t-shirts, running clubs, color runs. Uh, each school was in charge of their own activities. Uh, and then Julia and I just spearheaded it uh, from the district level. And you go to the next slide and you'll see what we did for nutrition education. And this really uh, fell into Action for Healthy Kids Week. So we combined what we do with that Bear Power Challenge and we did a veggie vote. So at each of the elementary schools, we had them vote on either fresh green beans or fresh yellow peppers. Uh, they did a thumbs up or a thumbs down and we voted. Uh, the green beans won. So for Every Kid Healthy Week, we created the uh, poster that you see on the right hand side there with a little fun fact about green beans and we menued the green beans at all of our elementary schools for one day in the spring. Uh, the kids got really excited about it because they remembered that uh, through our uh, voting system that they voted and what they voted won and made it onto the menu. Uh, we actually followed it through into the fall and so we had fresh green beans again this fall. And then the other thing that we did is uh, working towards healthy celebrations. We had uh, these orange birthdays trays that we made up for the kiddos and normally our trays are black our colors are orange and black as you can tell and 
now for their birthday at the elementary school, they get a bright orange birthday tray with a smiley face. Uh, you can see they're really happy about it. They also get to usually go to the front of the line and the lunchroom sings happy birthday to them. Uh, and we also, of course, give it to our home lunchers as well because we want everyone to be included. Uh, just real quickly, we also coordinated together on our wellness policy. So uh, we have it completely updated now and now we're working on um, building it so uh, we can have school wellness teams that will kind of fall into place with fair power um, and trying to decentralize it a little bit, having each school be accountable. And that's what we did this year for Action for Healthy Kids grants and uh, every school healthy week. Uh, we took it so now each school is responsible for their own and they can tailor their, their weeks towards uh, what works best at their school. We have some, some schools doing bird watching, uh, some schools doing different kinds of runs again, and they're just really creative at each of their buildings. Uh, the next slide is on our smart snack standards. So that's something that we developed with these weeks as well too, and getting kids and the schools to start thinking about new ideas uh, and what they can do if they still want to do food rewards. We decided not to eliminate uh, these food rewards altogether. We just chose to try and make uh, them healthy food rewards. So that's one of our uh, intern developed smart snack standards that will be going on our website um, for a wellness policy to for staff and parents and anybody who wants to use it. Uh, last but not least on the last slide is our recommendations. So uh, we really wanted to recommend to everybody to partner with whomever wants to be involved and I know our last panelist kind of said that too you cannot do this alone uh, I am very fortunate to have bear power to partner with uh, and with that we also have our local YMCA the ship grant uh, action for healthy kids kids we also have a, a very involved local clinic and pediatrician that helps us out our city and transportation departments uh, and then we have uh, community members and before and after school groups that all want to be involved in some sort of healthy initiatives. So we were able to take what Action for Healthy Kids gave us and uh, really expand it and it's something we like to keep working on. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brittany. Bridget. Uh, uh, I appreciate all of the, the kind of tips and, and uh, the different events that you had last year. Are there uh, any tips that, that uh, from last year you could take away and, and uh, maybe for schools that uh, haven't hosted an event in the past? Uh, Aside from uh, you know the big one there that you cannot do this work alone, um, anything else that you would that you would tell a school or a district that's just getting started? Absolutely, I, I mean the first year is always the most difficult year, uh, but once you get through it, I think this next year being able to give the schools, uh, yeah, our biggest tip was these schools would not have done it unless they had somebody pushing them. Uh, to do it all together. And so Julia and I did all the legwork the first year and getting the applications in uh, and getting all the schools really had to do was the fun stuff and purchasing and planning the events. Uh, and then they were more willing the following year to do, do the follow up with the applications and, and apply for the grants again. So I think just giving them that little push forward helped. Uh, you know, I'd also say planning early. Uh, we were, I think, a little bit tight on our uh, green bean crunch. And so we didn't get uh, we weren't ready with volunteers, and uh, so everything went off great, uh, but I would say planning just a little bit sooner probably would have helped us out. Great. Uh, thanks, Bridget. I, I, I think that's a, those are both great tips, um, you know, trying to do as much in advance as you can. Uh, uh, and again, you know, some of the resources that we have uh, on the website to, to hopefully help out uh, with some of that uh, initial planning stuff, too, would, would hopefully um, Take a, take a little bit of that edge off, um, as you said, uh, you know, from the district level, uh, getting everybody started. Yep, absolutely. Great, well, thanks again, Bridget. If, uh, if we have any, uh, any other questions for you, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, uh, but if any pop up, um, I'll let you know and uh, we can follow up with folks after the webinar. That sounds great. I'll try to stick around for another 10 or 15 minutes as well. Perfect. Thanks again. All right. So, uh, as Bridget said, uh, really some, some great events that um, that got everybody up and uh, it's moving and really celebrated the spirit of Every Kid Healthy Week last year uh, and some, some great tips from her, too. Um, so, I want to highlight just a few areas to really focus on when designing your Every Kid Healthy Week events. Um, so, so, a couple keys to success uh, and some, um, some final tips 
uh, and, and just some other examples of different events that other um, schools have hosted uh, in past years as well. Um, so I want to start with just the having that, that support and commitment from the administration. Um, I know both Bridget and, and Laura mentioned uh, getting that, that, that commitment, whether it's from the district level or from the school level up front, uh, letting them know what the activity is all about, um, if they aren't already aware of it, and getting their support right from the start. So, so really starting early and, and getting that, uh, that buy-in. When putting your um, activity plan together, you'll also want to engage others who can help you. Uh, that's another thing that we heard from, from both of our panelists. Uh, uh, finding that, uh, that support who can help and, and get excited about the event and, uh, and spread that excitement around the school community. So uh, that's something that you can use that toolkit for to, to help you get started with that um, organization. Um, you'll also definitely want to communicate your activity out to others, uh, getting folks uh, excited, involved, and of course, um, using those parent and community volunteers, parent, family, community volunteers um, to assist with any activity uh, and, and, and using them as that huge key to success. Uh, whether they're on the planning committee, whether they're helping set up activity stations or recruiting other uh, parents and family members to, to attend the event, um, helping with registration, cleanup, supervision, there's tons of things to do, um, as I'm sure we all know uh, with any event that's happening, uh, and, and the more support you have, the better. Um, I, I, and I, I, I can't say enough, I, I'll say again, it's, it's invaluable, and I, um, I encourage you to, to really start with your own parent community, the, the families um, and the, the school community there, get them involved in as, as much as possible uh, because it will really make that event one run much more smoothly um, when you can delegate those tasks and have that additional help on hand. A uh, few photos from, from past events. Uh, you saw some from Florida. These are other events in uh, Pennsylvania and Texas and Alabama. Um, and I just want to remind again that the ultimate goal of these events is, is to make uh, the Every Kid Healthy Week events that you're hosting to celebrate school health and to make them as fun as possible for everyone involved, from students to staff, faculty, parents, family members, community members, uh, and really celebrate and support the healthy initiatives that you have going. Build momentum into the, into the end of the school year, into the summer. Uh, keep that going as you start the next school year uh, in the fall, which... Uh, Sure, we're, it seems so far away now, but uh, it'll be here before you know it, and we're already starting to think about it. Um, we have state teams and state coordinators to help schools across the country uh, assist and answer questions as well. Uh, so use your state coordinators. Reach out, uh, reach out to me if you have any other questions. Um, reach out to the state coordinators in your state uh, that are there to support you and, and help you out as you're planning these events as well. Just a few other uh, activity ideas, taste tests at lunch. Um, Zumba, yoga stations, garden work days, uh, daily challenges. We've had um, lots of different schools do uh, one challenge for each day of the week during every Good Healthy Week uh, as a way to, to really kind of keep that consistent messaging going throughout the week and celebrate uh, physical activities, health screenings, dance breaks, uh, school health fairs, uh, family fun nights with, uh, with different activity stations, uh, just tons of events. Uh, fun runs, you can see uh, that's a fun run from Pink Elementary School in uh, outside Dallas, Texas. Uh, so just uh, lots of different creative events. And we love to see, um, you know, as, as much uh, innovation as you can, uh, as you can manage uh, as you're planning these events to, to really, you know, whatever works best for your school and, and uh, celebrate more that you're doing throughout the year. Uh, and finally, we want to make sure that you're sharing the success that you are having with the events with us. Um, on social media uh, so that we can share and promote those widely as well. Um, so use the hashtag EveryKidHealthy. Uh, you can tag Action for Healthy Kids uh, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Uh, we're all over the place. Um, and you can also connect with your state coordinator and have them um, uh, to share pictures, share stories with them. Um, uh, you can use the photos from Every Kid Healthy Week is one of the, the photos that you submit through your final report if you're a, a funded school with us um, and, uh, and continue to use those, uh, those hashtags and, and other uh, social media ways to, to get involved. Um, I also want to put in a plug for inviting local officials. We talked a little bit about uh, earlier about promoting your event um, with the, the flyer that we have that's editable, uh, press releases that you might be able to use. Uh, those will be popping up on Every Kid Healthy Week, a, a, a template for those. Um, shortly, everykidhealthyweek.org shortly. Uh, but I also want to encourage you to invite any local elected officials to come out um, or other uh, public officials, uh, bring some uh, 
some notoriety, bring some uh, publicity maybe to your event, uh, or at, at least just kind of show them what's happening in the school. Uh, and, and so they know that school health is a priority there at the school or on the district level, uh, and it, it starts to get on their radar too as they're uh, looking around to other schools. Uh, so we want to encourage you to do that. Uh, you know, uh, a little bit of mild advocacy work for school health on a local level. And that brings us to the end of the webinar today. Uh, um, I do want to encourage you, if you have any questions, to reach out to me. Uh, again, my name is Sean Wade. I'm the manager of volunteer initiatives here. And my uh, email there, you can see on the screen. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions uh, in the hopper right now. But if you do have any last minute questions, please feel free to enter those in the chat box. Um, uh, and I can get to those in the next couple minutes. Uh, otherwise, please do reach out afterwards, uh, and I'd love to connect with you and, and answer anything else and be of any help that I can. And finally, uh, I know we just talked about uh, sharing your stories with us on uh, social media, but here are uh, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest. Uh, we're also on Twitter, Flickr, uh, all over the place. Um, you can follow us there, uh, not just tag us in uh, sharing your story and sharing your photos and videos. Uh, but also following us for some tips on healthy eating, physical activities, recipes, volunteer opportunities, uh, and other ideas for action, how you can get involved. That concludes our webinar for the day. Um, we'll send out a follow-up email within the next two to three business days uh, with a link to the recording and handout. Uh, so if you missed anything today, uh, keep your eye out for that, uh, and we'll, we'll be able to uh, see, the, uh, see any anything that you missed and, uh, and relive all of the, the glory from the, the webinar uh, this afternoon. I'd like to again thank our pre presenters, Bridget and Laura, uh, and all of you for listening and uh, taking some time out of your day today to learn more about Every Kid Healthy Week. Uh, and again, thank you all for everything that you're doing every day to ensure that all of our kids are healthy, active, and ready to learn. Thanks again for your time and have a great day.